Oh, we're live now, apparently. Uh, this will be the uh, time we are, we are live recording this, Why you but give that away? it is the, <laughs> uh, welcome to, so this is the behind the scenes video recording and, uh, we're, uh, hey, we're, uh, we're just kind of getting set up. This is the, uh, you, you know, the version we've been a little bit of software issue earlier. We, so. we have. We have. We have. Yeah. No. If you're joining us in the chat room, we love you. Uh, not in that way, obviously, <laughs> you know. And uh, you know we're having a, we're having a little bit of video skipping, and I believe it's related to our our chroma keying. Um, it seems, is it but stuff? Uh, it does it skips a bit the more motion there is. Do you want me to? Uh, restart it? Um, it's totally up to you. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah. It yeah, it's uh, the more motion there is, it seems like the harder it's the chroma key is working, and uh, so it starts skipping. Yeah, that's true. We're not going to be moving that much during so not, the show we're lately. Not no, no. So it's totally up to you, man. It's okay. I say it's okay, and so I'm saying it's okay. All right, we're going to make it happen, everybody. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Jeremy, get those hands down. Unless you want to leave them up for the whole show. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one way or the other, big guy. All right. So it's whenever Chris is walking by. So once he sits down, we should be fine. Yeah. So there's a, of, a, uh, a lot of motion. He's a lot of motion. There's a lot of compression that has to happen there. Yes. All right, so let me uh, fire up the audio recording, and we can uh, make internet Sh magic. Let's make history today, you guys. All right, here we go. You guys in four, three, We're two. Four. And welcome, 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 everybody, to season one, episode two of Stoked, the Star Trek online podcast i am brian with me of course is jeremy that's me and chris hey there, brian all right this is a very special this is like this is that 1980s sitcom where there's a, a very special blossom that sort of thing mm -hmm. except this is about stoked this is a very right. special we're not a very special down, stoked a very, very sit down special and have a little heart to heart this is all 100 percent awesome that's right so okay, we don't sound ridiculous the reason <laughs> <laughs> we really don't you know what the thing is i was just I, I, I was thinking about Blossom earlier, and I have no idea why. You know, so I had that's to work actually happened to me every now and then. I, 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 I don't like that show. No. I didn't no. like that show then. But nope. you I didn't even this, really watch it. gave it. us the lasting, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. yeah it did that. But um, right. I mean, anyway, the so, reason this is special is because the Penny Arcade Expo uh, just concluded yesterday. Yes, sir. Uh, PAX is done. And at PAX, we actually got to get our hands on Star Trek Online. How we convenient actually, is that? We actually touched it. We sat down with our paws, and we just rubbed all over Star Trek Online. We got to fly in ships. We got to run around mm -hmm. and uh, shoot Klingons. It was great. Yeah. And yep. so many really friendly folks were there at the booth. Oh, yeah. Weren't they they were awesome. exceptionally friendly? Yeah, yeah they, they really were very cool folk. Uh, I thought they were very nice, and they obviously had people there working on the game, the people that were actively involved in the mm -hmm. creation of the game. Um, yeah. So that was really cool. And then they also had people that were like, uh, one of the one of the gals that we met is, I think, kind of uh, their key point for the interaction with the online community, which is cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. So very neat. It's very slick. It's very slick. So I, I, I kind of... One of the ladies from PR yelled at us a little bit. Yeah. yeah <laughs> we, we, you, you were supposed to be taking video footage of the uh, uh, yeah. screens, which... We did sneak some of that in there, and if you haven't seen that video yet, over at jupiterbroadcasting.com, I've posted some, I think, I don't, I haven't seen this gameplay footage anywhere else, so it's really exciting, some some great, you got some nice close-ups, I just want to be clear here. Of the full UI. Of the UI, yeah. yeah. That, uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the us not taking video of it only applied during a few minutes. I'm assuming that it was perfectly okay to be taking video footage outside of those few minutes that we were not allowed yeah, to. Yeah, just that scene. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right, which we promptly turned the camera down. We promptly did, right, because yeah. we were respectful right. of the cryptic fold. But we got, we got some footage of that, some highlights of it, and uh, it, over on our site you can find that. We and if you've been if you've been it. curious about what Star Trek Online is going to look like, what what the UI is going to look like when you're in space, um, I'll just say, I'm happy with what I saw and what I used. Yeah. Oh, but, uh, dude, dude. All right, let's let's get right into on on the gameplay. Let's do it. Um, I want let's talk about the uh, the land based gameplay first. Okay. Because uh, honestly, the stu the 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 flight stuff is so totally different from other MMOs that this is gonna that's a big topic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so let's talk that. about the land stuff. Okay. So to start with, uh, I'm curious, uh, Jeremy, you've got a bunch of notes in front of you. What do you got? Well, um, I, I think I was actually the first of us to get my hands on it. And the very first thing that I thought when I started playing the land-based encounter was, this feels a lot like, well, a lot of things. But it felt a lot like um, Champions Online. Oh, yeah, it feels a lot like Champions. Yeah. This feels like a lot of things. And well, if I mean, it was other, very basic. Like other cryptic 
software, they'll probably offer you different modes for controls. Yeah, yeah, yeah no like doubt. But champions. it was very basic. They had it set up for mouse and WASDA and uh, hotkeys on the one, two, three, four, et cetera. Yeah, it's yeah. Very so, easy to control, but also didn't feel very intuitive. Well, I don't know. I'm, or I mean, uh, in, 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 I'm gonna. That's the word. In, uh, you mean like brand new, like something? Yeah. Something. Well, uh, okay. First of all, I don't really know for ground mm. combat if there's a lot to. Um, a lot of originality there to be had, but right. I'll say not. This is not speaking towards my space combat experience, which I'll save for a little bit later in the show. Uh, I felt the online, like once I was on the ground in an away mission, I knew yeah. exactly what to do. Like I never questioned yeah, no. yeah, exactly. how to control the character. Yeah, and I don't know if you need to have some sort of new element just to have a new element no. to that because no way. you know using using. Uh, WASDA and using uh, the mouse to... I, I really think, you know, for a PC-based game, that works really well. And then I don't know what they'll do if they do bring it to the console. Yeah, when you bring in that level of familiarity, you, you reduce the learning curve. And that's a big thing to keep yeah, people out of yeah, certain yeah, games yeah. is the learning curve in, involved. And let's be honest, when we get into space play a little bit later, that, that will have a it's learning It's going to have a big learning curve, absolutely. Yeah, so if you keep the yeah. game played simple on land, I, I, you're not doing a bad thing. I'm just saying that right. don't expect anything new. No, I follow you. No, yeah. totally. And yeah. and let's be honest. I mean, Champions Online, the gameplay mechanics of it, the way it works, the way you interact with things, how you do missions, how you move around, it lends itself really well to having a nice, very story-driven type experience. Yeah, there's a very uh, engine-specific thing that I've noticed in Champions Online that oh, I yeah. did in Stowe. Um, it's, uh, it's really easy to interact with objects in the world. Uh, you just have a, yeah. a, a single hot E and boom, you're done. Boom, you hit Z or you, you don't click have to go around and, and try well, to click on the item. Now let me ask you about that because now this is a little bit off the beaten path, but um, you know one of the one of the things you kind of read online is is uh, on one hand the age of the Star Trek Online, which is the Champions on Online, et cetera, et cetera, engine. The age of the engine is a is a unique benefit to something Cryptic has. And then on, then you have people that are, tend to be the old Republic fans who are waiting for Star Wars The Old Republic to come out, and they're saying, you know, old engine is old, it's yesterday's news, new engine is where it's at. Um, where Jeremy, just as, you know, as a, as a long-time MMO player, wh what do you feel as far as, is there is there a, a line where the engine is just too old? Or is it, or can you Not just keep really. growing it? Especially in the MMO market, you can continue with an old engine for a very long time. They have huge life time. cycles. But, yeah. but look at, like, look at, but I look at World of Warcraft and I, I think that looks old. But let's, well, be, let's be fair. World of Warcraft looked old when it When shipped. it came out. It's it probably did. a 10 year old engine at this point. And Star Trek, yeah. the gameplay footage, and again, if you've seen the video, you know, but the gameplay footage looks, um, the graphics look great. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I'm a little worried that they look great now, but there's not a lot of room for them to get out of it. Three years, four years down the line. But see, I don't, I don't know that they have to. I mean, this is Star no. Trek we're talking about. It's like, and and again, I, I mentioned the 25th anniversary game last episode. But if you go back to the 15 sure. and 20 year old sure. Star Trek games, it's exciting because I love Star it. Trek, and we all love it. Yeah. But Joe Public might get turned off. Like new new oncomers to the game well, might get turned off by the old looking graphics down the road and then the, then i'm worried that the france the game see, i really start i really the don't only think people so. that i think would be turned off are people that aren't already into the mmo genre that's what I'm, yeah well yeah well that's and, and probably who they're trying to bring a huge in. market to draw from though and, well and let's you be have honest, a very fragmented you, market if you are currently playing an mmo odds are you're playing world of warcraft therefore yeah, moving to are. this game is going to be a substantial huge upgrade. graphical huge upgrade, upgrade. Right. So, but, so so i think that's fine and the other part is a lot of people that play mmo type games most of them are more into casual games than they are into I anything think, else, which means that they're spending their time on Facebook playing Farmville and all these other ridiculous Farmville titles, where they're just flash games with right. horrible graphics. I and think the are hope okay is, I think the hope is that the the Star Trek universe is going to bring in a whole new, not even MMO uh, existing player base, and I worry that they might have issues down the road. They're not initially because right now it looks fantastic. Right. But I think yeah. three years when they're trying to bring in people that are Star Trek fans, but they're not MMO players, which is pretty close to myself with the exception of Champions and World of Warcraft, um, they're, you, you're, you're gonna, if you're trying to draw me in. Now, I'm such a hardcore Star Trek fan that, like Ryan has said, I would play it even if it looked like a 25th anniversary game from the 80s but or the 90s. But the the side thing is there's not everyone is like me some people are going to get turned off right. and i'm worried that and yeah. i'm worried like something like old republic with a brand new engine has just begun to reveal its potential whereas something like but i don't know yeah, if that's totally no, so is that unfounded no, so i mean, here's, i, here's, here's no, I think that's a no. risk that you would accept in the mmo industry when you're making a title uh, you have to accept the fact that you're not going to be able to grow the technology as you go as much as a single title would be able to with yeah, a and has title. anybody is is do you guys know of anybody that's swapped out the engine on the back end 
uh, on the back end engine in No, game. but Warcraft, for example, since we've already been talking about it, has done its substantial uh, engine upgrades since the original release. Uh, if anybody's been playing, you know that the graphics when Lich King yeah, came out they were did, they did get yeah, they used to see bumps, upgrade. yeah. But they're still they're still I would say you know incremental bumps. Yeah, um, but they're still noticeable improvements. So they're you know I think on the space side of things, both Vendetta Online and Eve Online have done substantial um, engine upgrades. They look great. Where 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 that have really improved the overall look and feel. They, Eve looks amazing, yeah. and Eve is is an old engine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, at this point it is. And, and and see, there's there's the thing. When you're playing the space-based portion of Star Trek Online, it looks ridiculous. It looks fantastic. Oh, I yeah. mean, the the thing is, is it? I don't know what I would want to improve upon it, look and feel wise. No, at I this agree. Point, it looks great. It looks, you know, actually, my impression of the game overall is it looks very Star Trek. Yeah. You know, it, it even has the, the quality of the lighting in, in different and yeah, areas. yeah, the way the things are lit, the way things, the color of things, the the gamma. I don't know what it is. Like in Champions, looks like a living comic comic book. Mm -hmm. Like these guys, yeah. Cryptic Studios is really good at nailing that look. And that I, you know what, that's a good point. That look does buy them uh, some some you know leeway oh, there. A ton, so. a huge amount. Right. It, it, it's just like with World of Warcraft. They they made a definitive look and feel for the game. Right. You go with the that specific makes it, feel of stylization. That makes it so you don't have to have that high of a polygon count. Your textures don't have to be that nice. I mean, World of Warcraft's textures they're not that great. They're no, kind of no, yeah. they're kind of crappy actually. They're one Many. of the worst looking realistically quality wise MMOs that's out there. But their art direction's so great that hey, it doesn't matter. I think Star Trek Online as long as they stay. Close to the Star Trek look and feel for everything, they're fine. Now back to the gameplay, you know. Uh, so the doctor in our chat room, he mentions, I'm more of a first person shooter kind of guy. I'm not really into the role playing stuff. I really felt like, uh, uh, and this is true for more for pretty much any modern MMO, but I really feel like the uh, ground combat was a good mixture of first person shooter, mm -hmm. where you're running forward, you're selecting your yeah. target, but then when you get to the target, you stop and you. But in Champions, you use your powers. In Star Trek Online, you, you break out the phaser, phaser rifle yeah. and you shoot. Technology, yeah. yeah you, so you've got guns, you've got grenades. You don't but have you're not really, mystical powers. You're not really, though, spending time pointing and shooting. You're not aiming very you don't have carefully. To aim. Oh, yeah, no, there's it's not just, that. It's just yeah. click and, the then you, and then you fire. Right. It's, it's very, very different. It is distinctly an MMO. Honestly, it's distinctly Champions Online. It's Champions Online, only everything is Star Trek, which... Yeah is exactly what I want. Yeah, like, like I mean, I, I say that, you know, and it, it really is. This is what I want. As soon as you play Champions Online, and if you haven't yet, I recommend you at least, like, take a good look through the videos. But it is perfect for yeah. this type of game. Yeah. Let me uh, mention a few uh, details about the land combat, though, that, uh, that I just wanted to bring up specifically. Um, they've been quoted as, as saying that ground combat would be very tactical, that you would have the option to uh, yeah. duck behind cover and things like that. And I tried it. I tried this in a couple different missions using cover to my advantage. And as badly as I tried, the AI would not cooperate. Right. And, and basically, they wouldn't go for cover as well. So every time I ducked around a, a corner, Klingon was there with his bat lath right in my face. Maybe it was because they were Klingons. Um, or maybe it was because the AI is not as flesh. Is that a racist it comment? It's, well, it's it's still not. I'm not racist against yet. Klingons. Please don't kill me. Let's let's, let's say this right off the bat. So the the version that we have been toying with is a essentially a show version. Right. They lock down like you can't even hit escape and bring up menus. You can't you can't do yeah. anything. There's only maybe like yeah. four or five keys you can use, and they even had special function key passwords that they could punch in to like do certain oh, yeah, things yeah, to yeah. show it things off. It was definitely for show. Um. So. Uh, so what we really are looking at, though, is something that is two to three months away from closed beta. So it's really, you know, it's difficult. So Not things like the tactical yet, yeah. combat is really hard to judge at this point. We don't know it what it's going to yeah, be like. It was it, there, though. It was, I, I mean, it was like, there. It just didn't I, work. I walked up to a Klingon right. after I'd been shooting him for a little bit, and then I butted him with the uh, barrel of my gun, or actually yeah. the shoulder piece of my gun. Yeah. I walked and smacked him in the, the face. That with was it. actually fairly uh, satisfying. That was, uh, yeah. yeah, and there's a nice little swoosh effect with it. I yeah. mean, I like uh, the Klingon is knocked back, and then I can... Use that as a like a tactical moment to kind of regather myself and mm -hmm. yeah I mean it's there's definitely already some tactical maneuverability there that's very good and your uh, your bridge officers are they seem really smart to be honest they were I don't know if this gives them any advantage but they tried to flank uh, NPCs as much as possible like if one of the Klingons yeah. came running yeah. at me with the batleth yeah. two of the bridge officers would run yeah. further down yeah. the hall and get behind him yep. the bridge officer uh, aspect is very cool because uh, you know like they've said and we talked to them about this at PAX is 
uh, I'm going to be able to train up my different bridge officers to do different things mm-hmm. for different missions. And then, uh, so whenever you guys can play, I can bring one of them in. And if you guys are online playing, then you, you can f- sit in, or I can sit in for one of your That's guys. That's such so a great way to go. It's a great I concept. I love that. Uh, I love that. It basically means that you never have to sit around and wait for, I mean, one of the worst things in some of the MMOs that are out there right now is having to have a party in order to experience certain content. Yeah. Like, you just can't do it. Um, and it's just everyday content. Even in Champions Online, in some of the tutorial zones, you can't complete You, you need them. to have things with at least at least one other yeah. character right. to pull it off. I'm getting my butt yeah. kicked. I've played for 15 minutes last night. I'm just getting my butt kicked, well, you guys. Well, to be honest, you're kind of bad at games. Yeah, but you're well, bad at games. video games, so yeah, there is that. <laughs> so, no, basically what it is, is you've got pets. Yeah. Is, is every, Officers. no matter what class you are, you have pets. Yeah. This is the next, I think, though, uh, MMO evolution of pets because they're far more. I think. Oh yeah, they're much pets, more than pets, but they. Uh, yeah. But that's kind of what they are, right? I yeah. mean, it's like they're it's very like fancy the pet pets. classes. Yeah. In, you know, in, in World of Warcraft, you get to be the warlock without having to be the crappiness of the warlock. Yeah. You get to have. You get to have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. So that's actually kind of cool for me because I love having pets that I can I can order around, and uh, now that I get my own red shirts as as pets, that's that's just really <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool and. I kind of feel like, um, and I know this isn't too unusual for a pet, but I just feel like because it's almost, it's a person that I'm going to customize. Like I'm going to br- take them under my wing and I'm going to give them these different abilities through training and, and, and skilling them up. I'm going like, to become attached to these and people. And you're going to groom yeah. them regularly? Yeah, I'm going to make sure their hair is combed, that their uniform has <laughs> iron and things like that. And, them and stroke them and, and call them George. <laughs> and, uh, but I really, I feel like... That, what, ladies and gentlemen, was a literary reference. You are <laughs> Okay, welcome. let me ask you guys this. And Jeremy is specifically interested in your answer, but okay. uh, Brian, you know, uh, curious, what do you think here? <laughs> I know, well, I, I was going to preface that. So Jeremy, I'm interested in what you're saying. Brian, you well, know. Brian, you know, <laughs> I, well, I, what I was going to say is I talked to your wife yesterday while we were at PAX, and one of the things she mentioned is she's she's more invested in her champion's online character than she ever has been in any MMO character. Yeah. yeah. I feel the same way. I'm wondering, wondering if you guys feel the same way because I think it's something that they're doing in the way you can customize it. And what do you yeah, guys think? Yeah, character customization, customization has a huge uh, yeah. time investment if you want to do it the way that you like it. You can yeah. really build. like like I have spent... Hours. I built mm-hmm. Nikola Tesla Literally. Uh, um, yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I finally got to the point where Kenny Rogers, my, my character in Champions Online, looks like Kenny yeah, Rogers. Yeah, and I've got like six or seven different characters that all look awesome. But so each are, one you, has you, are you guys yeah. finding that you're more attached to these characters than you are other MMOs? Yeah. I'm easily oh, dude, much. Absolutely. So what I'm saying is in Star Trek idea? Online, are we going to be, so we'll have our main character we become mm-hmm. attached to, but I think I'm also going to become attached to my crew. Yeah. I think that's, that's reasonable. That's a big hook. Yeah, that's a big hook for them. No, I don't know. Really are, are, is the crew characters that you get? Those aren't characters that you design, though. Those no, are they characters are. you can they over are? time. You, they become base. No, but no, no. You can I, I mean, them. I mean, when you first get them, you don't design them. You actually get no. them. You can you can get them from missions. Right. You can buy new crew characters oh, yeah, yeah, later yeah. on and yeah, things yeah, like you that. You can pick oh, okay. them up along your, along yeah. the way. And now, now your own character, but you, you design and you make your own alien race. But you can you can train up the character. You can train up the bridge crew. Right. You can give them like you can make sure make them your own. Right. Like the I think the tactical officer. When you first get him, he can only fire one torpedo, and then over time, he'll learn to fire multiple one torpedos. One torpedo. I know, right? What a douche. Please. Yeah. Hey, while we're mentioning weapons, though, I also wanted to bring up that there seems to be a lot of uh, customization and variety in the ground combat weaponry. Yeah. Um, just mm-hmm. in the gameplay that I was able to experience, one guy hooked me up with a Gatling phaser. Nice. Which is basically like range cone. A Gatling phaser. A, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Have, was, have we ever seen anything quite like a Gatling phaser? Oh, who cares? In we have movies? now, and I love it. No, no, I'm not. I'm <laughs> not saying. More. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not poo-pooing this, mind you. I'm saying that's fantastic. Yeah. I'm just wondering if we've seen anything quite like this before. No, oh, probably not. I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's one of the things that I noticed with the ground combat is the way they, because you're a, you're a human being or whatever you decide to be, you can take damage. You're you know you're a humanoid. Yeah. yeah. So you have a personal shield generator, and mm-hmm. it's kind of a little bit like Halo. Like I was specifically talking to one of the developers about it. If you're getting a lot of damage and your shield's starting to collapse, you can run around the corner, and if you wait out there, your shield will, will kind of regenerate like it does in like the Halo game. Yeah. Or yeah. like a Mass yeah. Effect. But if, yeah. but if you're in combat, it takes longer to regenerate. But So the way, they, the way that they say you take damage is your personal shield generator takes damage, and then when your shield, gen- when your shield, shield generator fails, well, then you get shot and die. Right. Well, let's right. face it. In this universe, one shot should mean death. But right. They had to implement something that would make it a fun great solution, though. For because you're not so oh, human. I absolutely yeah, agree. No, yeah, a lot of people that's have perfect. poo-pooed this as being not canon. But if you look back at 
uh, previous episodes, even back as far as um, I know, Next Generation, maybe even yep. the, the original series, people had found ways to jury rig personal shields. Well, and in yes. the, an, the animated series, they didn't even have uh, they didn't have enclosed space outfits for when they go into uh, into a vacuum of space. Yep. They just had uh, force fields that they would generate. Yeah. So this would just necessarily yep. and and the animated series is supposed to be considered canon. So this would just be whoa, an whoa, extension whoa, whoa, of whoa, that whoa. technology. Supposed to be considered canon <laughs> well That's there's season four folks I, well, right there I, I i agree with you but there's been a couple um, of guys a couple executives in star trek that said it's not canon a couple yeah. have. Who, who said that who said that it, i don't know there are, there's a long lengthy article on memory alpha but if if someone wants to say that uh it, br- bring them on over here yeah and we'll, we'll have words because uh, in front of the green screen because they had i don't know I don't. Maybe it's just the fact they had oh what all the original actors and the proper writers and so the come on animated series is the original series. Brian. Yeah, I agree. Brian, let it go. Brian, you gotta let it go. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna let this go. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I think it, I think that's a great way. And I and for me, for somebody who's bad at video games, I'm glad that it regenerates. Yes. And let's face it. I mean, we're dealing with a timeline that's 30 years after the last thing we saw on right. screen. How much more technology? Could you have developed, especially after going to war with the Borg and the Dominion, right? Both of which had personal shield technology. Let's get into before we get into mm. the space combat. Let's just take a, if, let's just indulge a quick aside, yeah. Um, and let's talk about Star Wars: The Old Republic. And the reason I want to do that is because it's a space MMO. Yep. And it's going to be launching around the same time, maybe right. A, yeah. right? Maybe a few months of as Star Trek Online, so there's going to be a competition. There's there. going to be a lot of comparisons between the two. And uh, just going into it, I, I think I said to you guys, you guys, I'm a little worried. What if I really like this game? Like, what if yeah, it, so what we, if we sat away? down. We yeah, sat we down at PAX. I was worried. I was going to uh, I really thought it was going to look yeah. fantastic. They had, they had an hour-long video at PAX, and a bunch of guys got up there and talked and were not funny. Um, so they and, tried really uh, hard. They tried really hard. i got to give them kudos for that, but yeah. no, it was not funny. No, um, was and not they gave some videos. And the videos looked all right. Um, look, look good. I, I've got to say this. Star Wars is fun. You know, having yeah. lightsabers and going yeah. around and going vom vom. That's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. For some reason, and 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 they did it right. I think where yeah. the, where no, the lightsaber battles right. where you could be battling like five or six people at once, and it you were doing right. cool flips and behind the back saber yeah. blocks. Carrying, yeah, but yeah. somehow it looked boring. It did well. I was really, I was bored yeah. now, watching and it didn't giant look that high good. def it, footage it, it of it. It did not look that good. We're not just saying this because okay. we're big Stowe fans. We honestly wanted to know what we're looking at and make sure that we had, well, that it we did made not the look, right choice in which. I, 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 just, I, I mean, all this had new graphics, new this, new that, mm-hmm. voice acted, all this special Lucas Arts uh, artwork assets being put into the game, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is gonna look like a. Ama- and then that trailer came out. Oh that god! That trailer just was a, a, an amazing was battle. That trailer yeah. looked like the best Star Wars movie I've ever seen. And then it did, didn't the it? The game yeah. comes. Yeah. Then they start showing the game, and I'm like, so this looks worse than Star Trek Online. This looks boring too honestly yeah i left it with even if star trek online's not coming out i have zero interest in playing this game other than maybe if i get into like the free beta i'll try it yeah because yeah, it yeah. really did not look interesting at all i was bored i was too it's, uh, yeah it's really slow a it's half hour the voice, into their presentation the voice acting like, oh, really slows it down because it's constant yeah. cutscene. all right so let's, uh, let's make mention of this if you haven't if you haven't seen the information on this yet they're making a really big deal about how this new star wars game is the first mmo that is one hundred percent voice acting. It's supposed to be big so thing. not just text everywhere, and not the just problem, not just NPCs, but your own character as well. Interact every with. everything in the game and is it's voice constant. acting. Choose your own adventure. You choose how you respond, and then right. it's voice acting, which is which is very cool. Except for in an MMO, you make multiple characters. Now they're making a big deal that each class of characters has a completely different quest arc and quest path. And so depending hopefully on how you, you answer those quests, depending on how you choose your own adventure, you're going to get a different game each time. Yeah. So in yeah. theory, you won't. Have to go through the same gameplay, but in practice, I believe there's going to be changes to the, to the overall elements of the game. Yeah. But it's still the same core game. Well, and you know, if you have to sit there and listen to somebody tell you something that you could have read in a quarter of the time, That's then it's saying. going to take it's get so old. much time, and you're just going to stop playing. And well, the, but you know, I mean, Champions though has um, a couple of cutscenes, like when you get it to the Canadian wilderness. Well, every, right. uh, yeah, and and when you when you beat the uh, the the irradiated Canadian wilderness and the uh, right. uh, but you the know desert, what? yeah, um, each of the major cutscenes you encounter also give you a tour of the zone. Yeah, yeah, it's a flyover. So it's, yeah. It's like this and dual purpose yeah, thing. And if you point. skip the cutscenes by just hitting escape, no big whoop. 
Right. No actual mm. harm is done. Like you don't now, miss the objective. Right. You, you're <laughs> right. Because you still because you don't Danny goes through that. So it's it's cool. But then that means that in order for that to work, every di- bit of dialogue, every story arc that you go down in, in this new Star Wars game has to be really fun and exciting and interesting. And I'm assuming they showed us the best one they could think of that they currently had for this big demo, and I it was think, boring. I think we all three can include this is a game I'd like to play for an afternoon on my own. This is a game that looks like it would be yeah. crazy fun to play alone as a single player right. console title. But in an MMO environment, I mean, just sitting there, no. First of all, there's no text to read. It's just dialogue. It's just somebody right. talking. And yeah. and I so we we captured some of it. And I've been reviewing the footage. There was literally a four and a half minute spot where a guy was just introducing people and uh-huh. talking. And it was it was and early it was in on. the tutorial. So these are people you'll never care about. Yeah, Likely. it was. I, I, I'm like, I can't, I cannot play this. This, this entire clip of them talking is longer than I want the entire and, video to be. And you know what made it extra worse was that the timing was horrible. So it would be like, and welcome over here is character Jean Juin. Pause, beat, pause, beat, pause. beat, beat, yeah. beat. Hi, I'm Jean Juin. Beat, beat, beat. And it, it was like that for again, yeah, four and a half, five minutes. Now it, it could have been, been condensed, but just the same. If that's what it's like right now, and have a higher game all voice acted, that's a ton of work just to get the timing and editing right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're they're not gonna make it uh, in their time for the beta that they're talking okay, about. I don't want to spend too much more time in yeah, Star Wars, but I think our final call is it doesn't look the yeah, same. We've been told it's I, gonna I'm be. not exactly worried. I, you know, uh, yeah, and and because honestly, one of the things I walked away from at PAX 2009 was holy crap. There's a lot of massively multiplayer games coming out a at the around the same time yeah. Stowe is, and I'm like, holy. Well, there's smokes. already or like that are 80 already million. Out. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah. Are rolling new content. Exactly. Like, wow, it's got a new expansion yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. But just the same, though, I, I want to point this out. Cryptic Studios comes out with Champions Online, right? Mm-hmm, sure. Now, they previously did City of Heroes and City of Villains, which is now just generally City of Heroes. Yeah. Um, they sold that off, basically, so they're not involved in that anymore. It's now just NCSoft, who was the original publisher. Did you see how terrible their booth was, too? Yeah. Now, so here's the interesting thing. Yeah, they had a babe, at least. So NCSoft... Yeah, did you watch the, the video? Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, it was the, awful. They, oh. It was really bad. Um, but um, So I guess what I'm saying here is... Champions Online and City of Heroes are direct competitors. Yeah. They are the MMO in the superhero space. Cryptic made both of them and was so <laughs> confident that Champions Online would be so badass and hardcore yeah, yeah. that they were like, you know what? We are not even worried that, that our major competitor has a larger booth than we do in a more prime location than we do. When you walked by the two booths, you're like, Wait, wow, there is far more people. Was there the Champions any Online Champions booth. booth at all? Yeah, well, it, it was, was the Star Trek booth. It was the other side of it. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah, yeah, we have pictures up. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, oh, really yeah. Check that out. Yeah, we should mention that. So we have a Jupiter Broadcasting Facebook page. If you just go to jupiterbroadcasting.com on the right-hand side, there's a uh, like a, a, like a, little a fan. button. Yeah, a little button for our Facebook page. And I've posted a ton yeah, of pictures. photos yeah. from PAX. And, uh, and there's uh, quite a few in there from the Star Trek online yeah. and the Champions. We've Club. also got some, other than the gameplay, we've got some fun footage from PAX, yep. PAX on our yep. uh, uh, YouTube. Or is that on our website as well? Um, not yet. You can always catch it at youtube.com slash Jupiter Broadcasting, but I'm going right. to do like a series. I'm going to do like game clips and I'm going to do... We still have more reviews. Oh, yeah. Oh, packs. yeah. Oh, oh there's, yeah. There's, there was some really crazy great gear there if you're into technology and just geeky yeah. stuff. and It was fun. Stuff coming up, but that's all yeah. for, for oh. so much fun. Uh, we got to mention this before we get too much further. So we're talking about uh, like betas for all the various things. Yeah, so yeah. so Star Trek Online closed beta. That's we've been, we've been wondering. Yeah, this so. was announced on Friday or Saturday during PAX, basically. Yep. It came out Thursday late, and then Friday was the official day that people could go and throw their name in the hat. But yep. if, you yeah. s- if you signed up for the six month or the year of Champions, you're already in That's line right. for the beta of Star Trek Online. <clears throat> so, but when does that start exactly? Well, so, so we asked people at the cryptic booth. They were unable to give us a solid answer, but... Yes. However, one very nice person who I mean, is human... Won't we'll give any more details than that. Um, after us making this following joke had a reply. Well, I said to the guy, I said, yeah. I need to be able to make Thanksgiving plans, so I need to know if I'm staying home to play Star Trek online, or can I tell the family I'll be at Thanksgiving dinner? Which, I want to—I must give kudos to my, my co-host Chris. <laughs> that is the best way I've heard to ask someone when a game is coming out. <laughs> uh, 
the family. <laughs> and, 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 and the guy's response was, well, I hope we can get out for Thanksgiving, too. Yeah. And well, I think and, he said and, the cryptic staff want to go home for Thanksgiving, so they're highly motivated. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so this is this is what we're hoping for. We're hoping that means that their internal date is either someti- is on or near or sometime before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And let me tell you, I would be thankful for that. Yes. Yeah. Holy uh, yeah, Lord, I've already yes. told the wife that if Star Trek Online Beta happens to open up around then, she's got to count me out. <laughs> yeah, we're done. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. honey, you got to count me out. i got to play that. Seriously. But uh, this, no official date, but they're working very hard to have it out in the last part of 2009 for the beta. Yeah. Do you want to get back to uh, space gameplay now? Yeah, Should I we do. talk about that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually that. would really, really like to. I want to go into this in more depth later on, but I want to at least talk a little bit here. Okay, go. Go for so, it, Brian. So I'm a huge fan of space gameplay. No. Um, uh, EVE Online is a lot of fun for mm-hmm. me. Um, I, I don't know anyone else that I actually hang out with that plays that game. I tried it. Um, I tried it. Vendetta Online, if you don't know what that is, oh, do a look for that. it. Um, it's uh, basically... I it's, tried one of the two. It's a tactical... It's a lot like playing Wing Commander, except it's massively multiplayer, is what it is. And well, that honestly, sounds awesome. Epic. I love with the Wing Commander series right. a lot. Um, all of them. And so these are these are uh, uh, elite. Oh my lord, what a great game! So I love space games. Now I even loved the uh, Xbox 360 uh, version of Star Trek Legacy. Yeah. The one that I had our time. we the talked one about that, that last episode was reviewed, so was reviewed horribly. Um, yeah. People didn't like it. Uh, no one plays it. And in fact, if you have the game <laughs> on, you use your Xbox Live to go online to find a match with someone else, you just won't be able to. Because literally, Brian. you hop in there, and yeah, the odds are it'll either be empty or you know, I'll be the only one. What the shame about that game is, is it's voice acted all the way from Jonathan Archer to Jean Luc Picard. Yeah. I mean, it goes in there, Janeway, Shatner's in there. Yeah. It's. it's like it is a great well, it's awesome. gaming experience, oh, it's except awesome. for uh, it's ninety percent of the actual gameplay is turning your ship. Okay, <laughs> now now here's the thing with this. So um, it's all strategic. It's all about strategy, and it's slow strategy, and it's not necessarily realistic, but more realistic. I'd be you down with it if you, if could you have zoom a out. ship. You're not going to be able to just flip in circles and do all crazy types of. Fast I, but I realized if I could zoom the camera out, I'd be down with it. You can. No, you you can you can arc the camera, you can rotate the camera, but you can't go like super map zoom out. Yeah, like, you, you can, can go to tactical. Not like view, you, you can go, but you can't go boom and like look at this and see all the guys and be like, okay, I'm turning towards him. So you're kind of like oh, locked I see what in you're this. Okay. So you're kind of locked in this weird camera thing. Now, now, so there's cool the cool bits I thought. So we were playing so. Yeah, and we're playing in space. And we're by the way, the ships look ridiculous. I just want to get this out of the oh, way. Oh, dude, Holy space Lord. looks, and that's one of the things we got a lot of footage oh. of. It looks great. It looks so good. I mean, incredible. Um, uh, Eve Online kind of sets the bar in my mind for what mm-hmm. cool space can look like. But Eve Online is a very, uh, you know, it's dark, industrial. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's yeah. It, it's very it's it's like Blade Runner the space series, and yeah. that's what Eve Online is. Uh, Stowe really did a good job. They, it looks the, it looks great in space in the Star Trek style. It's it a little cleaner. Like, it's a little nicer. It's a little. It's like optimistic space. It's a modern s- space game, and it would be what Star Trek would look like if Star Trek had the budget to do all of the crazy, cool-looking yeah. asteroid fields and nebulas and yeah. planets constantly. But because and that all those exploded f- planets, right? Oh, all those oh, elements yeah. cost money. They leave I them out frequently, stuff. and like every now and then, you'll get a shot of the Enterprise E turning from a nebula or something like that. Right. But for the most part, it's just blank star fields. Mostly. Yeah, and but in 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 the space simulation oh, of Star Trek great. Online, it and I use the term simulation because it it really. It looks uh, great. It looks amazing. It looks phenomenal. And you can zoom way in and way out. Yes. Yeah. That's that's a really cool bit. And and the camera has a really cool feature where you can lock onto a camera. Yeah, you, so you can be yeah. flying along you can and you can say, here's, here's this stupid uh, Klingon bird of prey. I'm going to beat I'm, that guy I'm, I'm going to beat the crap out of that Klingon bird yeah. of prey. You lock onto it. Boom. You hit a key on your keyboard. Boom. You're, you're always locked camera on. Locks. So then you can do your maneuvering to make sure that you have the proper shield pointed mm-hmm. at them, which, by the way, so you have basically your four shields on, you know, on which four are sides. Which really... It's a great way to do this. It's not on your HUD. Uh, it, it is, and that's for uh, changing energy levels, but it's actually on the ship, on It the actually avatar. displays it, yeah, visually. And, and yeah. on the guy yeah, you're fighting, too. Yeah, so you can actually... They, they did that on the uh, on the uh, the Nintendo DS version of yeah. the Star Trek game. Yeah, great. yeah that's yeah. where I've it seen It makes that. it so that you don't have to take your eyes away from the action and stare at your hotkeys the entire time. Yep. Um, you can actually watch what's going on. You can actually enjoy the game. Like you can enjoy, enjoy the visuals. It's a key part of combat yeah. that they've integrated into just the actual viewing of the character, or the avatar, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Um, 
And it works so well because just by watching me and watching the guy I'm fighting, I know exactly where my weaknesses are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And you, and like, and you use then, so you, you're using WASD or your mouse to turn, and you use the arrow keys to redirect power to the different shields. Like, if, mm-hmm. like yeah. in the video play footage I, I, I posted on JupiterBroadcasting.com, uh, I'm just getting like assaulted in the front end of my ship. And I could hit the front arrow key to redirect power to my forward shield. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, it's great. Slick. I, I, I was very impressed. It uh, really honestly. makes you feel yeah. like a, uh, and like you're a captain. Now, the turning is slow. The moving is slow. It has to be. Because you're moving big objects. But w- what I love about that is one of the things you can buff your ship character with is the ability to turn faster. Yeah. Like, that's something <laughs> you can you can train up to and you can... We know where na- all Chris's points are going. Yeah. You <laughs> so can enable that. And what, you, what Chris is trying to say is if, that, if, you're, if you're lazy and you're bored and uh, you just don't have the patience to do a good job... You can just turn uh, on a buff. You can, you can turn on a buff the other, real fast. The yeah. other thing they have is different buffs for, like, tactical situations. Like, they have different tactical patterns, like... You know, tactical pattern alpha one or something like that. Yeah, or and that gives you a little buff. Yeah. and all this different stuff. And gives That's you, actually yeah. really cool. Yeah, I think that, um, somebody asked it. on the forums and a, a dev responded that will we have the Picard maneuver in there? And the dev basically said, oh, that would be awesome. Yeah, they said that we can't see it yet, but they would they want to do that sort of stuff. So oh, it'll be we're going to see some crazy maneuvers at high end levels. Oh, that's great! Yeah. I yeah. love that. Speaking speaking of Picard, uh, you can use a replicator. Um, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, when you're on the bridge, uh, you you're on the bridge. Chris you on choose, on, you on choose the replicator, yeah. and uh, there is actually an option there for uh, T Earl Grey hot, hot. <laughs> <laughs> and then you drink it refreshed, which is nice. <laughs> uh, the like, is, is there uh, your hair falls out? Uh, <laughs> That is actually real. <laughs> so you've got different, you know, your, your, the ship you have, depending on what level you're at, has different weapons capabilities. But generally <coughs> speaking, your phasers are, are fairly uh, 360 degree. Yeah. Wherever, wherever the bad guys at. I think they fire. actually overlap on the side of your ship, so you can broadside with double phases. And right. the nice thing is you can choose. So the ship I was playing, I had four different photon <coughs> torpedo bays, and I would choose the photon torpedo bay, and it would show the arc range of that torpedo, what yeah. range yeah. it fire in, so I knew where I had to turn the ship in I order to... I think there's an option to have those displayed at all times as well, so you know oh, okay. which one of your weapons is... is and then is if your tactical yeah. officer yeah. was trained up appropriately, you could fire four torpedoes from one torpedo bay. Yeah, a so salvo. You get, yeah, you get lined up and you quad you quad torpedo that, that mother effer and that Klingon is a screwed Klingon. Yes. Yes. Kaboom. Yeah. Which, by the way, the explosion did look awfully nice. They looked uh, a lot better than the previous footage that we had seen. Yes. It all looked like the same generic so we, explosion. Yeah, yeah they've mean, improved that a great deal. As far as looks go... Uh, Guru dude in the chat room is asking, you know, what looked better? Did the ground combat, ground situation look better, or did the space? Space. And, space. Oh, absolutely. And I think space, because, but I'll, I'll caveat, caveat is just because I think we we haven't had a lot of great space uh, MMO like, And honestly, it's easier to make space look great. I mean, let's be honest. But I mean, the, the ground looked fantastic. It and did. Oh, it looked good. And this was still an early development, but there was uh, physics in effect, like, uh, he, one of the guys that Jeremy and I were, were playing with, it had us go over to this secret area that he had coded in where there was just a bunch of tribbles in this yeah, area. Yeah, a whole a pile, pile of tribbles. tribbles. Yeah. Oh. And <laughs> Jeremy ran through the tribbles, and, and as he hit them, the tribbles went off bouncing. Yeah, it was like, uh, like yeah. soccer with tribbles. So he's still, they're, working on, they're working on having physics support in the game. Yeah, and things are, are explodable. There are portions in the King, Klingon base where you throw a grenade and parts mm-hmm. of the world kind of... I mean, they don't... That was, Walls don't actually break, but shrapnel comes out. The ground right. combat we right. played, which doesn't really make sense if you think about it, is you beam down, and I guess it's either a Klingon facility or the Klingons have taken over this facility, and right. it looks great. So first of all, one of the things they do, awesome, is so your ship, after you end the combat with the Klingons, you know, your comm officer comes up and says, okay, hey, you know, next part of the mission is beam down. You beam down when, you, when you're materializing. as the tra- It's the transporter effect from the Star Trek The Next Generation series of movies. The camera pans around the group, the away team, as you're beaming in. So you get this nice, yeah. epic 360 pan beam in. Yeah, and then, that's pretty cool. And then you start running around, and you're inside this facility that looks amazing. Let me mention, the, also, you, you mentioned the comm pop-up. This is a great um, feature on many different levels because, like, when you finish space combat, um, there's a chance that in other games you might be forced to, like, Go fly towards the planet and establish an orbit and blah, blah, blah. It could yeah. be boring. Been there and done that. But instead, basically your comm officer come, pops up and says, hey, all the Klingons are dead. You want to go to the planet? And you're like, let's go. Y- yeah. Yes, I do. It's nice like you have, so you have, a, you have a picture of the, of the comm officer speaking to you and the dialogue on the right-hand side. Yeah. And it's brief and concise, at least the ones we saw. And you, just, you either accept or you say, no, I'm going to continue fighting. Right. And I thought that was cool. Awesome. There were more Klingons on the other side of the planet. Awesome. You could go and mm-hmm. play with them. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. 
Oh, uh, so uh, so the Guardian. Uh, so last episode we were talking about how uh, you know the city on the edge of forever and uh, the, the Guardian there. Uh, there was some concern about whether or not that that might actually end up being in the game. Right. Um, we got a pseudo quote. Yeah. Uh, yeah Jeremy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, basically the guy that was showing us the game, we asked him a little bit about the copyright <laughs> problems that are going on, and he said it's going to stay. We're not taking that out. He's like, it's, it's in. It's, it's in. in. It's and in. It's right there. It's in. <laughs> and and the, level, yeah, it's the level that was playable at PAX, yeah, we could see that. We, yeah. You could actually run through uh, the Guardian. It and was awesome. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the picture that shows through the gateway changes on occasion. Yeah. Oh, and at one that. point I looked through, and it was the city on the edge. But at another point it was like the, the uh, rover on... Yeah, on awesome. the moon. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Way cool. You know what he said? He, and well, that was oh, not, this was not in the demo that we played, but you, when you jump, so it's going to be a quest. When you jump through that Guardian, you go back to the original series timeline. Yeah. So yeah. everything in the game is reskinned for that quest. Like Klingons with no bridges. Toss and, series, bridge, all this kind of stuff is reskinned, and you're in the original series 60s Star Trek for that quest. Right. That's so cool. How much do you love that? And you get to... Uh, I love that yeah. a lot. And how much team up with potential that? is that? I think my entire body just loved that. <laughs> how many, I mean, like, you know, for future expansions, you could you could add new uh, timelines that you jump back into. I mean, mm -hmm. it's... Oh. You could even have it where, like, somebody goes back in time and screws it all up, and you have to go back and fix it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and one of the things, you know, they've said DS9... <laughs> that doctor, always causing trouble. <laughs> they said DS9 will be in the game. I love the idea of, like... You know, going to DS9, and then what? Maybe there's like some sort of you jump back in time, and now it's when it's Terok Nor and the Cardassians are running DS9, or when it's the Mirror Universe and it's the the, right? the bad Bajorans. Could be. <laughs> They're all bad Bajorans. That's right. It's the ridges. Stupid. We're going on record. Stupid the ridges make Bajorans. Bad. Those little nose ridges. <laughs> I know it. And and their uh, prophets. Yeah. Taking Doctor uh, Benjamin's. And we're not talking <laughs> Ferengi prophets here. No. No. No, we're talking no. the ones in the. the alien we're talking world. an entirely different word. Something yeah. I just remembered that I didn't like about the, uh, the ground combat. And uh oh. I know we're talking about an MMO, so there, you got to suspend your realism a little bit. But at one point, when I was walking around, when I found the, the pile of tribbles and played with them for a little bit, I, yeah. I was encountered a ridge that was as tall as my character, and I just jumped up onto it, just like standing jump. Oh, so you, you could like essentially super jump? Yeah. Huh. So I was like boink. That could Just really be I'm a gonna be honest, in progress. Though. Though. I'm, I'm going to say that Captain Kirk could do that. So Oh, you're, you're on a good yeah. point. William Shatner yeah. is a jumper. He yeah. could climb a mountain, you guys. Yeah, he could climb the uh, whole mountain. I think, I don't know, Jeremy, that is definitely like, that seems like a... You know, jump ability equals four, and then just go in there and say, all right, now we're yeah, going to put in production, jump yeah. ability equals two. Right. Yeah, maybe. Right. Maybe. I'll give him that. That's, okay. that's, a, that's a tough one. Plus, then again, you've also got, you know, Spock running around with his, like, jetpack boots half the time, and, you know, maybe and, they've got jetpack boots. Maybe. We, were, we were not playing humans. Different races have different jump may abilities. And maybe oh. the planet had low gravity. And maybe my part, my character was part gazelle. That's a yeah, a high possibility. <laughs> maybe, so we were talking maybe about that was a possibility. We were talking about space combat, actually. Um, something that's been mentioned in some of the uh, commentary that's been uh, from the gameplay that has already been released is that yeah. it looks possibly slow. Um, now Chris had this concern because it was also it looked kind of similar to the uh, the legacy game legacy, where yeah. you mm -hmm. spend half the time turning. But let me, um, they have found like pretty much the perfect balance. Dude, sweet spot. It's central. It is slow. It did nice, and but it feels like um, it feels tall like combat. It, it feels like open seas combat. It does. It feels like you're you're yeah. out in an exposed area. You're exposed. Mm -hmm. You're fighting with large, big, heavy objects. Yeah. But it's not like boring. Right. It's not like. I mean, like, I never once was worried about, oh, I was spending too much time turning. There's, I was yeah, constantly there's enough, fighting. There's enough responsiveness in the controls. That yeah. You, when you turn, you turn. It doesn't happen yeah. immediately, but it also gives the whole um, space combat thing a, a very strategic feel that you know um, where you're turning is because you need to move your, your shields to face them. And right. you're making choices. You're not just no, and there was running around jumping because there, and you there can. And was, there was constant action and going on. Well, it was interesting. About, so, of course, you know, one of the things they have is impulse control, and you can just ratchet up your impulse and uh -huh. just yeah. leave it on. Now, Jeremy, you mentioned that in your gameplay, when you would hit, like, E or whatever, D or whatever it was, mm -hmm. you would tap D and it would just continue to turn until you tapped it again? It was basically the way that space combat seemed to work and uh, I found it a little, the learning curve is a little steep. I th um, oh, well, I was going to say that. But it was that. basically yeah. when you push down a key, your nose turned and it seemed to stay that way until you push the opposite key. So when you push down D, 
you would your nose would turn to the right. Right. And you would keep turning right. And basically, if you never touched another key, your ship would fly in a circle. Well, what I like about that is you can go about then doing yeah. executing other commands Absolutely. while you're Absolutely. Yes. But now, where I said the ground combat was 100% intuitive for me, I did have to have them coach me on a few aspects of the space combat. It was not 100% intuitive. Right. It did make sense once they explained it to me, but there was a few moments where they're like, oh, no, you have to do this now. Right. And, and then when I went back to play a second time, like I, I, exper- I experimented on my own and I figured other stuff out. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. That makes there were sense. also some. Um, yeah, there were also some commands that they kind of hid from us in the original in the uh, initial UI um, screens that we have in the footage that I shot. The UI was very condensed. They right. basically right. used the the um, bridge notes or uh, cliff notes version of the UI. They really did. <laughs> and uh, but. Uh, as I played with it later on, you can expand almost every single one of those windows to give yeah. you additional options. Well, it was really additional, uh, the cliff notes keys. slash clean. Like my my impression was that it was very clean. It was. And yeah. That's that's a thing about that. I liked it. Clean is the look of that was like the whole thing that the set designer was going for on the next generation was okay uh, by by the 24th century technology is no longer this new thing that we use it is an extension of our daily lives and so it's become kind of clean and organized and yeah. organic and so that the interface was right. minimalistic and clean but gave me the vital information that i needed and speaking of next generation the interface is all done in kind of an pseudo l cars yeah even the targeting reticles like when you hit tab to, to oh, so focus nice. in on a on Looks a bird great. of prey it's a little, uh, you know, L, upside down L shaped L cars so beautiful. Uh, display. It's, so beautiful. It was great. You mean it's like what computers should look like? Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why don't they look like that right now? I don't know. Ridiculous. I don't have an answer to that. I have a little Mamo tablet. That's my little Nokia NA10. That's true. Yeah, look, that has That's L true. Cars. You can change that on the fly. Um, um, the yeah. UI in general was, uh, it was also all customizable though. Um, besides being able to expand and contract all oh. the windows to show as many uh, options as you wanted, you could drag them. Speaking of that, one of the things you nice. mentioned is you know, in your fleet, you can all have the same uniform and the same race and the same look of general look of ships. Uh-huh. So there must be some sort of standard template system that you're going to be able to pass around that lets you, uh, and you've mentioned this once or twice during me about files or something. There's some sort of, some sort of ability we're going to be able to give to right. each other. That way, like if we want to have like this awesome, huge lightning bolt on our uniforms for our, uh, for our uh, fleet, fleet. All of us will be able to have a lightning bolt, and there's some sort of way we can pass that around. And I don't know how they do that yet, but it's also sounding like, uh, from what the guy was saying, it's also going to apply to our ships. Like if our ships have like a signature type of uh, deflector dish or yeah, oh, yeah, or yeah. logo on them, like we're going to be able to say everybody that joins gets this look. Yeah, that's cool. It's like the uh, the new equivalent of tabards and and yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, banners in other games. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And so if we all like are you know, I just think I love the idea of like uh, you know, your your character can look crazy. It can be a four horn half Vulcan, half Romulan, half of Nosigan or whatever, but... That's a lot uh, of halves. No, that's more that's than That's a lot halves. of halves, yeah. Yeah, uh, but you have the same uniform. Yeah. And so, like, when... Or what I, what I really like is the idea of, like, four, five, six, seven, eight of our ships that all look kind of the same, just barreling down on somebody. Yeah. That does look... That does sound awesome. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and they showed, and they showed uh, you, know, you know, footage, basically, there of ridiculous quantities of ships fighting each other. Yeah. Which did you guys, <laughs> that pleases me. Did you guys get so any, uh, any yeah. sense of what the max um, amount of uh, uh, size of a guild was going to be? It sounded large. No, but the, the general impression I got was that away teams were four, uh, and yes. that was generally kind of sort of locked. But I think, uh, but well... That, but that ship battles were much, much bigger. I think, that, I think it's actually five, Brian. Is it five? I'm yeah. sorry to, to call you on that, but I think I it's think five. I think it is five. I can't believe you called me I know. That. Well, um, do I me a favor and so stop failing. Torqued and off right then now. I won't have to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> mm. Interesting. I'm torn. I remain torn, undecided. <coughs> All right. Uh, I, anyways, the customization potential is is it's great. Huge. So, yeah. it, you know, if you pick a Starfleet officer, you're gonna have to probably work within that framework. But, but some of the on. they had like just a couple of ships on display, and I really dug this is, uh, one this of is the ships they had. We're talking about cryptic is yeah. huge yeah. into customization. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I also, I just it. wanted to mention real quick that most all of the reviews that we've done is of Federation content because that's all that we have been able to get yeah, our hands we on. Focus on. Yeah, you know, there's a little bit of information out there that's about all they the Klingons were showing, yeah. because we, we haven't been able to play them, but um, we know that they're highly customizable. We've mm-hmm. seen several mm-hmm. different models. Yep. When you fight the Klingons yep. uh, on, in that one base, most of them look different, and there are females. Yep. Huh. Thumbs you know, up. That's a good point. Yes, they all did look different. Sir. Yeah. And, um, oh, well, and each I, time the world's supposed to be randomly generated, too. Like, the, like no world map is ever supposed to be the same. Yeah, they uh, they showed some. I like that. That's a mind bender. Yeah. yeah Sorry to really, interrupt. That's that really was, cool. That was but just, not, just, yeah. not entirely random, because they always had the, the oh. runway with the Guardian of Forever, but the rest of it was just 
Yeah. But but yeah, like Whatever. like like the uh, uh, the underground like labyrinths that you have to fight through in so many MMOs. Uh-huh. It's different. Yeah. That's very cool. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so you were you were talking about the Klingon. That I, I, oh, I uh, we do know that the Klingon um, play style will be much more combat fo- focused than the Federation. More we, PvP too. You mentioned too. Right? Yeah, a lot more PvP. Houses in within yeah. the Klingon Empire will be able to fight each other. Go to battle. With Klingons them. will fight other Klingons. Yeah, I doubt that's going to happen on the Federation side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't so, see that. That's interesting. So that, unless you bring unless it. Unless you're Bajoran. Oh, right. Yeah, then and then you're everyone a, needs to fight unless you. Unless you're a dang Bajoran. But if you... <laughs> I, Dun, that's dirty not, Bajoran. Don't have to worry about that. No, not right? any not, not on my watch. Shouldn't be caught dead. Um, the issue, though, know, if you choose the Klingon route, you might end up having uh, a very in- more interesting... Uh, if, you, if you have to fight other Klingons, that could be... A lot of fun. I doubt it's have to, because in the the day and age that we are in MMOs, PvP is almost a hundred percent consensual. Have to, yeah, um, you have to tell them that you're you're good to to go on PvP. You're not just going to get jumped in mm. most modern games. No, I understand. Yeah, unless you're playing in a place that's already a PvP server, and then that basically means that you have already agreed to always be jumped. Right. Right. Um, so, any final thoughts before we wrap this episode up, you guys? Other uh, than I loved it, I, I loved every. Oh, inch okay. Of it. So, so I don't know how many people are still listening because it's towards the end of the episode. But um, I, I got it messed up. I had, a, I had a moment. I had a, like a celebrity moment, but it was with Star Trek Online. Yeah. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. When I, Chris first sat down yeah. to start playing it, the, 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 the oh I just kind of zoned out, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm playing Star Trek Online." And you, the cryptic, really the, the cryptic guy that was he was talking, talking to through me. it. And I was kept having no, to ask questions. So I, was I was not like, listening huh? because I was like, it's like if I had just met William Shatner mm-hmm. and like, like it just, everything else just kind of like just faded away. And because, you know, I mean, we've been following this game since Perpetual Motion, right? That was her name. Yeah. Since yeah. they announced that they were, yeah. all the, all the little leaked tidbits here yeah, and there. I mean, it's been like, shots from like the, four like, years ago. Yeah. Four years I've been following this game. And so yeah. finally, all of a sudden this, this mythical game that we've been talking about and wanting to play, all of a sudden my hands were It's like it. petting a unicorn. And I just had this moment of, <laughs> oh my God, this is Star Trek Online. Oh yeah, it my did God. look pretty great. I am, wait, what did he say? Oh, hey, I'm, wait, what? I'm playing Star Trek, <laughs> what? I'm sorry. Oh, I should listen, he's telling me how to play the game I want to play. <laughs> and so then I had to like, you know, f- refocus my mind. But um, You know, I, I, I didn't quite have that celebrity moment, but one, one thing I did notice is, Walking around and looking at all the things I was supposed to be excited about, we went over to the the Blizzard booth. Yeah, and they yeah. had Diablo three yeah. playable, Starcraft two playable. playable, and I got to put my hands on it. And, and, I, and at, the Cataclysm expansion and playable. the new World of Warcraft. So I, I looked at them, I touched them, I'm like, huh? Yeah, no, those are good. I'll play those, I guess. I'm gonna play those. Yeah, I'm no, going to. I, I'm 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 happy they're coming. I'm kind of excited, but, but like nothing. But like yes. in both of those cases, I had something where I immediately went, "Huh, well, that's great." Uh, I kind of don't like that they did this, this, and this. But I think you I'm know go what? Play Stowe again. Yeah. Then, then I walked back over to the Stowe booth. Okay, this looks. This That's is exactly right. That's a great right. sign. This is exactly right. <laughs> That's a great sign because uh, I, you know, uh, I've been. Afraid. I mean, when does that happen with a Star Trek game? Star Trek games always are a little meh. Like you play it for a while. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was fun. But like, but like, if you're a Star Trek fan, you you love it and it Absolutely. holds a place in your heart. Yeah. But you know, if you're not, you always use. Uh, well, I just don't know. Yeah. The, this one though, I, I tell you guys. So kudos. This thing looks great. You are on the right track. And um, just real quick before we sign off. Man, I do... that was lucky that it looked good, though. We come out here, start a show about it. There there was a, a few minutes there where I was nervous. I was like, dude, I'm yeah. going to go to this booth. I this know, game dude. is going to suck. And then I'm going to be like, well, I, I guess I'm going to start a Star Wars online uh, <laughs> show. Well, no, uh, I guess I'm going to play the game that doesn't look that great. Uh, yeah. And, and have to talk about it every week. Yeah, no, and I wasn't. Now we're gonna I wasn't going to do that. I, I was not going to do that. I was going to end up being the guy on the show that's like, ah, screw this game. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but right. it just it looks great. Though. I'm going to go play Hello Kitty. Oh, we got free samples. Oh yeah, that, free so Hello Kitty online. That, yeah. 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 All right. So you know, uh, I'm posting more footage from PAX. Uh, I've already posted the gameplay footage of Star Trek Online. Had to get that out the door right away. Right. Nice uh, job. If you go over to Jupiter Broadcasting, check out our Facebook page. Lots of pictures yep. from PAX. Pictures of the booth for Star Trek Online that aren't in mm-hmm. any of the video stuff. Definitely worth checking Good out. Good Pictures of many of the friendly cryptic staff. You guys were yeah. really helpful. Yeah. Really. Everyone we talked great. about uh, that we talked to. You were friendly and personable very much so yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree i, I kind of was afraid that you guys were going to be a, gi- a bunch of gigantic nerds <laughs> but uh well there was really. definitely a couple of nerds well, there they but they were cool nerdy. nerds yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, like hang outable nerds yeah, yeah yeah i'd hang out with those guys and so uh, i'd have a beer with you and do some barbecuing i'd vote for you for president nice oh i want to mention too that uh, star trek <laughs> the star trek online show the best 
show all about Star Trek Online. That would be us, you guys. Stoked. Yes. Is uh, you can download now via the iTunes store. You can search on iTunes for Stoked, or there'll be a link on Jupiter Broadcasting in the uh, feed section. You can drop down the list. It'll be in there. And also, we have just a standard RSS feed where you can subscribe there and get this show. And As you we can release, go to YouTube and beautiful. see our channel, subscribe I, to the channel. I believe that I believe the plan right now is uh, primarily for a weekly release. I don't know if we're going to hit yeah. it every time. If there's nothing, it, d- it depends on how much content. And as you probably yeah. already noticed, our previous episode was audio. This one's video and audio and, and, audio. and audio. So um, we're probably going to be alternating back and forth. Yeah. It depends on how much footage we have and what it you really guys does. like. You know, the show. Yeah. And even though we've done lots of shows at Jupiter Broadcasting, we like to treat each show as a whole new kind of adventure that we're doing. So we w- we get the audience feedback for that show right. and decide what you guys like. So yes. let us know. And then uh, definitely uh, hit us up on the Facebook page because uh, we're going to try to post, post more and more stuff there for the Star Trek Online show. Fantastic. For the stoked. I love that. All right. I think All that right. wraps up this big show. Well, hey, it, it was it was uh, was great having everyone stop by. Pax again. was a lot of fun. Pax was a ton of fun. Big thank to to uh, Penny Arcade folk for putting on the big show. Big uh, thanks yeah. to Cryptic for coming out and having such a nice booth. By the way, one of like three booths with a booth, babe. Yeah. I just want to point that out. Thumbs up. That it was a big, big nerd conference, and there was only about three booth babes, and Cryptic had one of them. And we got thirty photos of each. <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> at right. least, man. Gentlemen, here. Uh, See you on uh, next week, probably. Most likely. All right. Thanks, everybody. Stay tuned. There we go. Audio recording has been stopped and saved. All right. All right. If you're still watching the video, you getting a few extra moments of content Stop over those, those crazy audio <laughs> listeners. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to mention in the show that we decided on a name for our fleet. Oh, yeah? Oh. What was it? Jupiter Force. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I need you guys to know the video. No. Oh, shit. We claim before we... Before make we, sure it's... Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to try. We're going to create yeah. champions says, Brian, you seem much more animated tonight than you did in your pictures. <laughs> hey, you guys, you guys like pictures? Those pictures I was, are uh, awesome. I was rather really happy. With it. Like a boss. Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, come on, good tiling on my part. Is anybody in the chat room playing Champions Online at all? Uh, yeah. And Mike, yes, I do play Vendetta Online, but not that often, and especially not now that Champions is out. No. Um, I, I love Vendetta Online, though. Great, great game. All right, do you want to say goodbye to the team? All right, we're signing off for the video one. Do you want to, are we leaving the stream on, or are we I just cut? I'll hit, I'll hit stop recording. All right, we're, we're going to stop recording. Stream's going to stay on.